What is up everyone? It is Riley Reviews back again with another video here. Today we are going to be reviewing the Rooted Deluxe Joker 2 pack from InArts and I am very excited to do so. If you guys didn't know this was one of my most anticipated pieces ever and InArt being new to the game with their first six scale figure I wanted to see if they were up to the test and we're going to find out in this video. Now I received this figure safe and sound from 1.6 kit. Make sure to check them out in the description below if you want to purchase in art products or pre-order. They are extremely reliable from my buying experience. Now let's find out if these two figures were worth $1,000. All right, everyone. So since this is a full-on review, I'm not going to be showing how the figures came in the box and head sculpts and all the other goodies because I wanted to more focus on the figure itself. I have been unboxing and reaction in my previous video, so if you guys are interested in seeing how it looks inside the actual packaging, make sure to check that one out. I'll put a link on the top right for you guys and also in the description. Now wasting no time on the docket, here we have Heath Ledger, the six scale figure by InArt, and my God, does it look great, guys. I am so happy about how this looked. I had my previous reaction when I opened it outside of the head sculpt, but now that it is on the body, I am even more shocked. I truly understand now why people say getting this in hand is a whole different experience. When you see this on camera, yes, it looks amazing, but when you get it in hand, it goes to a whole nother level, guys. The realism is bar none, top notch. You definitely can feel an almost see what you are paying for now pulling up the second figure the jail scene joker and honestly guys when i first saw this sculpt on videos and stuff i was like yes this may be a little bit weaker but as i'm reviewing this and looking at it more it's tough to me to decide which one i really do love more do be sure to let me know in the comments but again guys this rooted hair i can just say it it is absolutely amazing we'll see what happens in the future and how it holds but overall, I can say it is totally intact. Even when you move it around, it feels like it's almost glued to the figure. It's the hairstyling on it was definitely well executed. And as you can see, you can clearly see the Heath Ledger likeness from any and all angles. InArt obviously wanted to make sure that the likeness to Heath was there for their first figure and the hype going along with this. They knew they couldn't mess this up and they definitely did not. Another thing that I wanted to talk about is the actual rooted hair coloring. One thing that I noticed at the Las Vegas event when we saw the prototypes, it was very bright green and not differentiated in color. Coming to the final product, I'm not sure if they listen to collectors, but you can definitely sense they have the brown and lighter shades of Heath Ledger's hair, which just makes it even more realistic. And as you can see, guys, I'm going to show you how to move the posable eyes. You're going to go into the back bottom of the sculpt here and notice there's a big piece of hair that you can pull out. There's going to be a seam line that you can honestly pick with your fingernail. It's a very simple mechanic that I was honestly worried about, but getting it in hand, there, I've had no issues in doing so. And the hair may be right up a bit in the start, but again, this is so stylized to the point where you can fix it all back brand new as it was outside the box. But again, I am extremely confident in InArt doing rooted hair products from this figure. I am extremely confident in InArt tackling rooted hair figures now because of these two products I've had. The hairstyling was amazing. The hairspray they probably be used on the figure is very strong and keeps it intact. Like we've all seen with Hot Toys figures, rooted hair is extremely hard to tackle. You kind of sense that Barbie doll aspect and it's unfortunate, but in my opinion, InArt really did a fantastic job here. And all the photos you are seeing here is after I was moving the eyes and futzing with it. It is an absolute game changer. I'm telling you guys, when you get this figure, move the eyes. I did this at the end of my review, so I wasn't able to capture the movable eyes with all of my poses, and I am regretting that so bad because my friend told me to move the eyes, and I think it makes Heath Ledger's likeness even more than I already saw beforehand. Now, speaking of hands, we are now going to the accessory section, which is a lot to go through. We're going to start with the hands here, and they are crafted brilliantly. As you can see, they are these seamless versions that you can put on the Joker prison cell version. I love how you can see the makeup from the fingers and also the veins on the arms. It's just, it's another level, guys. I'm telling you, when I saw this prototype in Las Vegas, I was doubting this quality would match in the final and I am completely eating my words. I genuinely remember picking these up and thinking, no way in mass production this would stay the exact same, and I am wrong. It genuinely looks like the exact same thing I saw at the event. I like how they gave us the opportunity to have the jointed hands, although it's not really useful because there isn't open ungloved hands. That way you can't really peg it into it or else you're going to be having gloved hands with a prison cell joker. So that's going to be something that they can hopefully look into that in the future. Now here we have the infamous exclusive die cast handcuffs that really are detailed excellently. You can also use them like on your figure and actually have the click set in like an actual handcuff. It's, it's, it's amazing what they're really producing in six scale form. 
Now let's go to the die cast gun. That is so heavy, guys. I'm telling you, when you get this hand, you're going to feel the heft to it. It's really cool. I know there's a controversy between having plastic or die cast accessories, but when you pay this much money, you can definitely feel that aspect that, wow, I really did pay $1,000 for this because little things like this are made of die cast. You can also pop it out and it is held by magnets. We'll talk about how I feel about the magnets a little later in the video. But like I said, these things feel like actual six scale guns. It's kind of crazy and unreal the detail they put into these things because opening little things like this, I'm not really expecting much quality wise, but NR are showing me up here. I'm really excited about how these things will look in the future with licensed weapons like a Glock is kind of unheard of. Now showing again the clip that you can take out and see the bullets actually lined up inside. Again, the little gimmicks here are really not necessary, but are appreciated. Now here we have the grenade effect because you know there's going to be collectors out there wanting to replicate that iconic scene in the Dark Knight and it's going to look really awesome. But here we have it. It's got a little bit more heft as well for being so small. I believe there's die cast in the grenades. It obviously was going to be noticeable. And here we have the jointed arms that I was talking about beforehand. Looking really great. Nothing much to say there. Apart from how much I love this feature, guys. I'm telling you, a lot of people have said that they've had issues with the magnets. For me, zero issues whatsoever. All of these hands, they all come magnetized, but you have to make sure to tug it in even further to make sure that it is actually joined in so nothing falls or gets damaged. But so far from my figure, I've had zero problems with the hands and joining magnets in that way. But I will be making a future video of what I don't like about the figure and what I love about the figure. So stay tuned on that for more of an in-depth analysis on the things I do and don't like about it. Right now, I'm showcasing you guys all the hands it comes with. A big array, honestly. I wasn't really at a point thinking, why didn't they have this? Or why didn't they have this? Why not this hand? It's all really comes with as much as possible you need. Trigger holding hands, grenade holding hands, gesturing hands, fist hands, open and relaxed hands. What more could you really need with your Heath Ledger Joker? He's not Spider-Man. He's not anything crazy. Not a Batman. He's just going to be doing the deed as the clown himself. Now here we have the actual money, which again, I'm just like, okay, it's money. It's six scale money, nothing crazy, but like the amount of just detailing and texture they put into these things, it looks like I'm grabbing an actual dollar or hundred dollars, whatever stack this may be. And I'm just, again, really happy with what they've done here. I may sound like a shill, I know, but there's really not much I have to complain for. It's just really what I wanted is what I got. It's a really great product. And again, the knife here being plastic, not die cast as everything else was die cast was honestly surprising, but not the end of the world as I'm not too finicky with that. It, it's something that I can pass on, but it's just interesting how everything else was die cast. And we have an array of Joker cards, just too many to count. Let me know which one's your favorite in the comments below, but they look really cool, honestly, really nicely detailed. And another nicely detailed thing is this instruction sheet, an actual book it feels like with how much stuff it comes with, really helps you out when it comes to having struggles with the figure. And here we have the actual card to where they talk to you about it. Make sure to pause if you wanna check out what it actually says. They also give you this really cool ticket for the Joker and when the pre-order went out. I thought that was really cool and just unique if you wanted to display this because it's a special moment in art's first ever figure and us collectors grabbing it, it's just really awesome to see. And here we have the display base, which is extremely controversial i'm gonna make another video like i said but what i will say is that i am honestly fine with it i've had real no issues as long as you read the instructions there will be no real issues with falling unless you're doing an outlandish pose or not using the magnets correctly we got a nice little banner here in art showing the platinum version of their first figure and now we're going to go into the functionality of the base and how it works now first thing i will say is that you have to have the base position to where you have the dark knight logo planted in the center that is what the instruction tells you and that is what i'm going to be following and now i have just lifted the figure and you can see that the magnets are attracting to it and staying in place but this is extremely important which the instructions tell you the heel and sole of the shoe is supposed to be on the magnet, not the front of it. If it's in the front, like you see here, it is going to fall. But if you place the figure forward to where the magnets stay intact with the sole of the shoe, I have had my figure standing in this exact position and it has not fallen for over two days. What I will say that I don't like about the base is that it's not around the entire base itself. The fact that you only have two placements makes it extremely limited in posing. Hopefully something in art looks to in the future, but I am glad they are doing magnets and have no issues whatsoever. Now, the next beast that I wanted to grab for you guys is the metal die cast jail cell. I was pretty shocked at how tall this thing was, and I've seen some collectors have issues with the back of the base bending backwards, but I've had no issues whatsoever, but I will keep you updated. And here we have the wooden base floor, which is not magnetic, but does look detailed excellently and super hefty. And we are now doing some ASMR here with the jail cell. That's not, I'm not going to be doing that, guys, but this is really cool. Again, showing that money you really paid for in stuff like these. And we have a bench. We also have another thing. 
thing that you can place. Joker's sitting in there in his jail cell. He can't just be standing there. He's got he's to have some place to rest. And this thing is really nicely detailed as well. Even the insides have rusting. And each top of the base, I've noticed, are detailed differently, which is really cool for mid art. Now that we got that all out of the way, whew, gosh, guys, it's been 10 minutes. Here we have the actual Joker, top to bottom, looking absolutely beautiful. Again, before having this figure, I had some reservations. The magnets, the base, the hair, putting on the hair. There was a lot that could have gone extremely wrong with this figure, but I am so happy to say that all of those problems are a non-issue for me. The two main issues that I had were kind of things that I haven't heard much of, which was the actual process of getting the sculpt on the actual body. Whenever I was doing this, maybe I'm just bad at doing things like this, but futzing and tailoring is something that I am clearly not good at because when I was putting this head sculpt on the body, it felt like a nightmare if I'm being completely honest. It spent like about an hour or two trying to futz with it. But again, I'm very bad when it comes to functionality with these figures. My friends know that even when I was putting the Doc Ock base on the tentacles, it took me about 30 minutes because I'm just really bad at things like that. So getting the head sculpt on a body that is very tightly fit and tailored was definitely a struggle. And lastly, I would say the base being absolutely fantastic functionality wise, the problem is that they only have it in two placements. So when you're trying to do a lot more outlandish posing, you can't really use the magnets. You have to base it off balance, which can definitely be a non-issue for most, but wanted to make sure that was clear. Now here we have the two facing off against each other. Who's gonna be the winner? Let me know in the comments which one is taking the crown for you. Being completely honest, outside the box, I was thinking purple, but when I moved the eyes on the figure on the right, it was more so leading on that one. So I'm kind of mixed between the two, but I'm gonna just stick with the purple coat version. But like I said, moving the eyes on the right one is necessity. You can totally see the likeness after you move his eyes in any other direction than when he comes outside the box. Now, is it really necessary to have a two pack of basically the same figure? Maybe not, maybe it is, it could be different for others, but for me, I think that it was definitely valid for the price because double packs with Hot Toy figures are about like $600 anyways, so adding that rooted aspect with all the other functionalities, I just wanted to go that route because go big or go home, that's the always the way I see it, and I think rooted takes it to another level. I've seen the sculpted, I know it is great, but I'm telling you right now, the rooted is far superior than the sculpted version, but that makes complete sense because it's going to have that price hike. Now I'm gonna try and quickly show you how the posability is with this figure, and I am telling you guys, the posability is limitless. You can pose this in any real way. I've had zero struggles whatsoever. No breakages, no cracks, nothing scary at all. You can literally do Spider-Man poses, dancing poses, really all you want. I'm gonna have him swinging here like Spidey, but um, like I said, you can even hear the creak right here. The joints on everything is very tight. No problems whatsoever. For a Joker figure, I was really expecting limited posing, but Inart just really doesn't care. They want to make sure you have all the posing you can. That said, with the jacket, you're going to have a little bit more limitation because there's just like five pairs of clothes on them. And talk about the clothing, guys. Look at this tailoring. Absolutely amazing. You got the grenades there, the form-fitted tie, the coat, which actually has magnets on the lapels so you can make sure they don't fall, the chain, just everything about it man i'm telling you i'm not over hyping this guys it's a beautiful figure apart from some slight nitpicks which may not even be an issue for you really you can also spot weathering all around the figure in this brown paint which really does look awesome i'm glad that nr did that because it just makes it that much more realistic and joker was definitely not clean like this in the film I also wanted to show you guys that you can do a lot more functionality with this base, having it on the other end rather than being him sitting, having the jail cell with the handcuffs over his hands, and he's just questioning like, what's going on here? Why am I stuck here? I'm ready to get out. I'm ready to burst out and cause a little chaos. I'm sorry. I just wanted to, I wanted to sound cool. It didn't work. But um, This figure looks really cool. I'm, I'm loving how this is really looking. And again, flipping it over the other way, which is you're naturally supposed to have it with him clapping his hands. Just... Too iconic, such a great scene, and I'm, I'm glad to be able to recreate that with this diorama base. The more I pose these guys, the more fun I'm having. I'm telling you guys, I cannot wait for you to get this in hand. If you went the rooted route, I really don't think you will be disappointed with the price you paid for, and I just think it is completely worth it. When it comes to custom stuff, it is always going to be in the masses, $800, $900, $1,000, $1,000, dollars The fact that this is being mass-produced at this scale, the materials, the die cast, the magnets, the rooted hair, the detailing on the sculpt, the likeness, too many things that I can say that I just really think it is worth that $1,000 price tag. But the question is for you, do you really think this is worth $1,000? I would say being a two pack is definitely helping that factor of price. If this was a single pack, 100%, I wouldn't say it's not worth it, but that is just one man's opinion. Do let me know in the comments what you think. Do you not like this figure? Do you hate it? Do you think it was okay? Let me know. 
Now, another thing I wanted to showcase for you guys is the actual die cast machine gun, because I know collectors out there have had issues with the magazine falling. For me, I've had no issues whatsoever. I've shook the figure, I moved it. Obviously you can see it right here. It's not really falling, but we'll see what happens in the future. But I will say the stock felt a little flimsy. That might just be a normal thing, but I just wanted to make sure to let that be known. And the actual pistol, not issues in this video, but I will say after reviewing this, as I was doing more poses with the pistol, I noticed that the magazine clip would fall at time to time, but overall it's really a non-issue as long as you don't mess with the figure. Now I wanted to showcase another concern collectors had for the Inart figure, which was the magnets on the hands and wrist pegs. What I will say is putting the figure on the wrist peg just manually is not going to work. That's not how it's supposed to work. I don't believe Inart meant to do this because if you do that, it's going to fall. It's, there's no chance about it. The problem is that some collectors are leaving it like that and it's going to fall. You have to actually peg the figure's hands into the wrist peg because it's not going to work if you use the magnets. It's just simply what it is. But once you actually have it snug in, it's not falling. You can see right here, guys, I'm putting a lot of pressure. I know I'm a skinny guy, but still, I'm putting as much force as possible. And don't worry, guys, as long as it's pegged in, it's not falling. Now we have another pose here with the Joker card. I was really happy with how this turned out. Kind of him crouching over with his purple coat, blowing away with the wind. And I love how they added wires. I've always talked about this with Hot Toys. With all their capes, anything that has to do with something that can just float or anything, why not add that extra wire? Because it just adds more of that realism aspect and you can have a lot more fun posing. What I will say about this pose though is that you cannot keep this over time. I do think it would fall because if you can see the right foot has his heel not on the base. And like I talked about beforehand, if you don't have that, it is not mainly secured on the magnet. So if you, as long as you have the balance though, he's not gonna fall, but I just wanted to make sure that would be known. This would be a perfect one for museum-esque. I doubt he would ever fall in this position. Maybe the weight of the diecast weapons, but I've had no issues so far. But like I said, maybe a future batch got better. I'm not exactly sure, but overall I'd say when it comes to the diecast weapons falling or anything dropping was never an issue for the past two days I've had them. Another quick tip if you stayed this long in the video, make sure to buy yourself a set of tweezers when you're messing with this figure. Like I said, one of my main issues was getting these sculpts in the body. Maybe it would be easier for others, but I'm telling you, getting the actual tailoring back to where it originally was, you will need a set of tweezers. So make sure you pick that up because it's gonna be a game changer in the long run. And not only for the tailoring, but for the hair itself. If you have some strands hanging out, which I'm sure a lot of people will have, I had maybe a couple, having a set of metal tweezers and just finagling with it, messing with it, pushing it back into place, You'll have no problems and the sculpt moves fine but again i'm never taking this out again because i personally had a lot of issues putting it on but my best advice i can give for you guys is to unhook the collar and flip it upwards unloosen that tie and you'll be able to put it in swift and sound another pose i wanted to show for you guys is the actual jail cell figure being put on the normal base and it works the all the same it's you can use either or figure with either or base pretty clearly and the seamless arms are a really nice gimmick very easy to accomplish you just take off those cufflings on his wrists and tuck up the sleeves i didn't show an actual video but again it's very simple to do i'm happy inart is doing this i hope we see this with their future releases because like we've talked about when hot toys did it with that wolverine we were so excited and they haven't done it recently and i really hope that they do more of that because it just adds that extra set of realism. But as we wrap here, guys, I really do appreciate you taking the time to watch this full video. I spent a lot of time on it. I had a lot of fun posing this figure because this figure was one of my most anticipated ever. And the fact that it was Heath Ledger, one of my favorite characters ever, it was a no-brainer pickup. Ultimately, for me, in my honest opinion, having this figure for a couple days, I would say it was totally worth the $1,000 price tag and definitely the best six scale figure in my collection. If you did enjoy all the content, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button as it does help out the channel and make sure to click that join button as we started our new channel memberships if you are interested. Thank you all for watching and we'll catch you in the next video. See you guys.